Do you want to relax? Are you having trouble sleeping or focusing? CBD reduces anxiety, chronic pain, seizures, PTSD, depression. Try our CBD gummies or chocolates. You will be very satisfied. Visit cbdcollections.net 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 Everyone, welcome to another conversation. Today, we have Rosemary Macklin of Jamaica, who is a fashion designer, making her mark in the competitive world of fashion. The globe is her workplace, and she thrives to satisfy the diversity taste of her clients. To do the interview, it is my partner, Chris. Take it away, Chris. Thanks so much, Denise, and warm welcome to you, Rosemary. Good to have you here. Thank you, and I'm so excited being here with you guys. Lovely. Awesome. Well, we want to get our audience to know you a little, especially since there are a lot of Jamaicans listening, in, and they just love hearing about somebody's roots. Share with us a little about your Jamaican roots. Oh, wow. Well, I was born in Jamaica. As Janice had explained, I um, lived in Kingston. I left Jamaica at a very, very early age at, at the years of seven, but trust me, I've never forgotten my island and forgotten the beauty as I visit quite often, although I'm, I'm no longer a resident of Jamaica. So I've enjoyed my childhood, the beautiful island, what we have to order, the diversity of our people, and I carry that everywhere I go. Boy, I can hear it in your voice. This is wonderful. Well, you, your profession is no easy profession. When did you first get the inkling that you had the skills to really compete in this kind of game? Well, the skills to compete, that's a little different. Uh, basically, I had the inclination of doing fashion from a very early age. I used to dress um, everyone in my family. I also was the person <laughs> that whatever I purchased or anyone purchased, I would have found a way in which to just, as they call it, zhuzh it up a little bit better, literally change whatever they put on, because I always feel like whatever a designer has or and you purchase it, there's always something that should be custom to that person wearing it. So sometimes I'll see certain things, I'm like, if they had just done this, then this would have just just taken that dress to a whole nother level, or that could have been so much better if they had done that. So from a very early age, I've always been someone who's been able to dissect what I see in the fabrics and what people wear, and so that's kind of what makes me a little unique to what I do. This is wonderful. Was there anybody who kind of said, boy, that girl has it going. Yeah, we should really nurture that talent and kind of mentored you or encouraged you along the way? Oh, yes. My aunt um, and my mom, they're twins. And my oh. aunt this is the, was the fashionista when she was in her early 20s. And I'm telling you, that picture, you know how Jamaican household is. When you have a big picture, it stays on the mantelpiece for years. So as yeah. a child growing up now in England, um, you know, that picture stood over the mantelpiece no matter which home we had moved to. And it was a picture of my aunt um, at one of her fashion extravaganza, and she just looked elegant. And it was almost like I forgot. I don't want to sound sacrilegious, but it was almost like the Jesus over the fireplace. So you came in and you saw this beautiful woman every time. You saw her in this beautiful gown and that's the inspiration I have and she was always a fashionista and I've been lucky that I say I'm come from family with 90% women so therefore I have a great platform to work from and everyone in my family have been fashionistas that's really great yeah so um, I'm sure that you you might have gone to some um, beyond us the home grooming that you may have gone somewhere to to get some further training. Tell us a little about that. 
Oh, well, and when I was growing up in England, basically, I went to Anilun Culture, and I did a lot of um, home economics trust classes. I would do different type of craft classes in school. Um, when I was younger, um, I, in college, I decided to go another direction, going into business. So um, when I got a little older, I'd say probably about my 18, 19 years old, I decided to go back into the realm of um, design, fashion, and I just took everything I learned and I started to do most of this myself. So I'm a, I'd say rather than being formally trained, I'm a self-proclaimed um, designer, and I have a, a wealth of, I'd say, traveling experience, history, and I think I've been around people who make things happen. So basically I've got a lot of people that I draw inspiration from, and what I do, I design and I find seamstresses who have been formally trained to do my business. So I'm the eye, and they are the actual fingers and the crafters. Wow. So you you develop the strategy, and they do the fulfillment, and you, you kind of build your team that way. That's really that's, great. That's so you exactly have a value right. chain here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I sure do. And so I bring things that people like. I, I would never even put that together. I've never seen that because as a young girl, I mean, coming from, you know, being a Jamaican, living in England, we had a lot of diverse um, situation. I mean, not to put on anything heavy, you had from racist, racism, you had from, um, you had um, the mods, the punks, the all these different criteria of people of genre. And when I put it together like that, you're able to be able to in, induce yourself into a multifaceted way of seeing people from different angles. And and as an artist, I kind of put these different elements together, and I find when you use that in fashion, you're able to reach a larger audience because there's a little of somebody in every piece of what I make. And so there's something that's going to fulfill that little either childhood memory or that childhood um, of just that thing that made you feel good, and I try to put a lot of culture in what I do. Well, so you, you basically have created like a synthesis of diversity that that's what the, I, I'm hearing say guided your your creation philosophy? Mm-hmm. Most likely. Most, most definitely, I'd say. Because I just feel that fashion should not be stereotyped. I think fashion should be um, literally created, and it should be something that can be in, enjoyed by all. And if you put a little of something that everybody enjoys, then I feel that it may be just the fabric. Sometimes I have, I used to have older clients that used to say, I just love to watch her go shopping. You know why? You just hear the hangers click, 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 click. And that's because I don't look at the style. I, I'm feeling the fab- fabric. And I stop when there's a fabric feel that makes me go, oh, what's this? And so I find that um, just having your own little niche of what it is that may um, inspire somebody else or give them an oomph of there's a reason I like or I buy this piece is why I I design such creative pieces in my designs. This is wonderful. So if if I'm hearing you well, you you seem to have a sensitivity to, to the nuances of that client, and you go about um, preparing them to serve. Because you have a, it seems like you have a very wide, diverse, cultural, diverse, sensitive clientele. And um, give us a little more, because that, that seems like it's a good secret sauce here. Well, it is. It is in a sense, and I can. And, and I'm, I'm sure, although we're all proper, we've all been educated. I can still go back and speak my raw Jamaican. So basically, <laughs> as I said, I come from a diverse family of lots of women, and and being around the environment back in the 80s, I'm just kind of giving my age a little bit. They used to be the type of women that every party, every dance, every big, every occasion they went to, it was always they show up at star time. And my star time family means when they walk in, whatever time it is, that's when the party starts and so they always had to make a grand entrance and it was a thing that people like yeah man we're walking and we're just, them just have to look for me see me yeah look for me see me and it's one of those <laughs> things and as i've developed this brand i've called it see me s-i-m-e-e because it kind of you know reminds me of when my aunts and cousins and all these other glamorous women of Nottingham, which is where I came from. We had, you know, people that just know fashion and designs. And if you're familiar with England, um, I should say history, Nottingham is known for the best.
best laces and fabric. That's where they used to have the best lace fabric um, um, factories. And so it's all about fashion. And then we'd go to London back in the you know 90s and you know get all seen all these different um, elements of designs from Petticoat Lane and different markets and different um, platform that just it's all about fashion color. And I had a wonderful upbringing of, of people that would just keep me grounded in the understanding that whatever or wherever you go in life, you have to make a, a, an, an impression, you have to stand out, you have to literally walk in a room and own it. And that's how my garments are. Anything you buy from See Me, somebody will say to you, oh, where you get that from? Or, oh, oh design that, or, where it come from? And I just love hearing it. It's just something that does it for me, that when I see hear people like, I'm, you know, everything's not for everyone, but I do know when people put on my clothes, it's a whole different sense of, oh, my God, I would never think I could look like this. And that's what keeps seeing me in me. This is wonderful. So they're making a statement. Is, is there, you know, there's a fashion statement that they say, look at me. Mm-hmm. Is there any other aspect of that their person who they're trying to express to the statement they're making in dress? Well, basically, I, the, the people I dress are a lot of people for who are doing any events, public speaking, um, weddings, people who have a reason to stand out in whatever um, platform in which they need to, to dress. I, I dress entertainers. I dress people who, as I said, um, are do, going places that, you know, obviously they liked. When they show up, they want to make a grand entrance, and that's when you come to see me. I'm, I believe very much in elegant. I don't do – I believe in class. I believe in making sure that um, – um, a woman's body is accentuated beautifully. My husband is a plastic surgeon, and I work very well with him in the office because all we talk about every day is how to contour the woman's body to its best form possible. And basically, it's not always what you have underneath because the first thing we see is what's on the outside. So I have to make sure that I know how to make the outside of you look fantastic so that the underneath is just as beautiful as I'm sure God has gifted most of us with amazing internal sides. Well, this is great. So, boy, that, that's that, that's you get one a little journey because you now have a husband who has that kind of. So how do you partner now beyond that? Give us a little more on that piece. How do you, how do you partner? Oh, explain to me a little bit more. What, with your how, husband, how, you said your husband, mm-hmm. your husband being the kind of. Um, doctor well, he contours he is. the body, the skin, and I contour yeah. the fabric. It's simple as that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have patient people who would come to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely tell them, like, oh, my gosh, you listen, um, there's nothing. You don't need to do this because they have to come to me for consultation before speaking with him. And bottom line is once you, I get to understand, and I would tell you that maybe that's not what you need right now. You're beautiful. You don't need to do that. But you know what? I can show you how to take what you have and wear the correct clothing, and you'll get the same effect of what you're looking for. Because, of, um, you know, um, it's, a lot of people know plastic surgery is uh, – is literally a, a procedure in which, you know, it's elective. You don't have to do it. So a lot of times right. when you walk in, you may have a, um, an inner thing that you feel uncomfortable. I want to change this. And I explain if it's a permanent change, we've got to think about it a little bit more before we jump into it. So let's try and see if we can take care of what you have in by accentuating you in a different ways or telling you to go work out or do something else before we say, okay, it's time for you to go under the knife because obviously you need you think you really need this to to help your self esteem or you know make you feel better within yourself. So it's it's we work very well together though sometimes he gets mad because I turn away money, but it's okay. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I will I'm we're just honest. We're just honest of what it is. People don't understand sometimes it's psychological. It's not really, you know, necessary. And sometimes you ask him to have something done, it it may not be to your betterment because you're taking a risk in whatever you do. So I feel that we complement each other because I will be able to, you know, and most of our friend, patients become my friends because we're brutally honest. And if it's not worth it, we won't, we won't take the risk. So obviously to have you or have the patient or have the client become a see-me dresser, then that's the best way it is. And then they feel so it's, it's a win-win situation. Neat. You've talked a little about, um, you know, more, more the, um, the personal dress. But, folks, another place where people, where dress matters is in the workplace, in the professional setting. 
How, how do you advise people uh, around their choices, their personal choices in both the professional versus the, um, the personal when they're in a, say, workplace? Okay. Well, that is always a personal preference because you have a different workplaces, per se. And so you have to think about your clientele. I'm in a sunny place in Las Vegas, so when, even when it's professional, I like to use a lot of light fabrics. I like to use things that I know is going to give you that professional ambiance and at the same time allow you to be able to, to, to stand on the, the – well, basically, your your credentials of who you are within each company. So when we deal with professionals, there are certain fabrics you would not wear, and there are certain fabrics that I would definitely encourage. And that all depends on the level of professionalism that you're trying to elude into that workplace. So right now, it's funny you touch base on that. I'm just working on another project that is going to be an absolutely amazing um, feat as soon. It's going to be launched in August. Can't tell you what it is yet, but it's also addressing. Uh, the workplace and having women um, be able to 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 feel more positioned as to how they present themselves within the work environment. So um, this is something else I probably will be back again to tell you guys about this, but it's going to be revolutionary because it's something that's totally unique, and we are going to just take off with this. Um, but we're launching in in August, and it all it all has to do with I got my brainchild from this from um, being a lot, of, a lot of people being quarantined and actually being able to see people on Zoom and how they look and how they, you know, like, you know, a lot of people mo- are on Zoom and all these online uh, meetings now. But yet still, you should still have a certain uniform in which you present yourself. So my team wow. and I are working on that right now, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be revolutionary. It's going to be the next coat is- of, of, of clothing. It's going to have its own name. So I don't want to give it to you yet until we have everything going. <laughs> it's on the tip of my All tongue. Right. I can't this give it to good. you. This is good. Well, I, I, we can't wait to hear, you know, how you're going to make that happen. And being, being you anticipating that is certainly uh, uh, give a lot of folks um, uh, anticipation moment. Well, you know, we, we've, we've been going through the dreariness of the pandemic for all these months, and that's kind of put such a damper on social gathering. Um, how has that affected your industry? Oh, it affected us tremendously. That's, that's probably why it gave me time to really think about this other idea that I know no matter what we do, it's something that would be always done because we as fashion designers, we revel in fashion weeks and fashion shows, being able to show our garments out to the public on a seasonal trend of different you know, platforms. But due to the pandemic, we got hit so amazingly because we got hit, one, you could not, you could not go out. Two, people weren't going out. Three, nobody had the money to spend because they didn't know what they're doing or what, what's going to happen. And last of all, people were literally like, um, clothes doesn't matter anymore. Everything became a leggings. I think the leggings may have had made more money than anything else um, in the last year because people just stayed home in sweats and leggings and T-shirts. So, and nothing was bought. Mm. It was all just old, old things that they didn't have to dress up. And so we got tremendously hit. But right now we are coming back very strong because now with my, you know, my line of Simi collections, especially summer line, it's all about, you know, the summer fashion, the, sum, the heat, the getting yourself together for the beach wear, the travel wear. And so my main line of, of products um, is all about the beautiful cover-ups, elegant cover-ups for summer 2021. And um, we already started with a blast. We have lots of uh, orders in and people are just getting ready to get out because they're like, I need to jump on a plane and get on a vacation. And when I reach there, I need to be free and look fabulous because I've been closed in for so long. So yes, we were affected, okay. but now I think we're kind of seeing a, a little scope of something opening for us to be able to start getting back out there. Well, well Mass, this is great. And the way you've been able to pivot and adapt to the new circumstances. Well, I guess mass has been used as a fashion statement. Um, uh, and, and as people get out of that, if, if they can't, um, if they, they're not, uh, what kind of hints would you give them as they make the journey beyond COVID in a post-COVID world? We know you're coming out with this um, really revolutionary stuff. But there are the tips or hints you'd like to share with your audience to prepare them for a post-COVID world? 
Well, uh, realistically, trying to do something that not even a CDC can do right now would be crazy. So basically, <laughs> um, we because it's still an unknown. Um, so basically, the only thing that I still feel I am a added person of of I have to wear my mask, I have to put on, I like to wear the mask shields, the nice mask shields, the plastic ones that's out. I don't, I'm hoping it works because it's all, it's all, you know, anticipation of what is facts and what are not facts. And everyone in this society nowadays is so, um, some people are so, um, they're, 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 they're believing and there's some that's totally not believing what's going on. So I personally think my advice would be just to wear the best mask. Um, I don't, I don't believe in using mask as a fact because it's for your health. So I, when there was all the pandemic and people were making masks, 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 I was very cautious <laughs> about that because I, I, I mean, as a lot of it was, was spent through fashions. I've seen fashion shows with masks, but until it's unless it's clinical and you want to be here, you want to protect yourself, I think that's something that sometimes you just have to sit out of some things, and that's what CME did. We decided we weren't going to go into the mask industry. Um, I was just going to buy whatever is clinically, the, the N9 and all these other numbers of masks. Uh, I decided to buy those, and, and I would just suggest that people keep a clear mask because, you know, we want to see your faces again. We want to be able to smile and see each other's face. So I'm, I'm a big advocate of the, of the shield, the, the clear shields that just give Give you protection. Uh-huh. I pray it works um, because that's what I wear. Um, and anyone who has, you know, I said, you know, that they've, they've been blessed that they haven't had COVID, then you know, just do, keep doing what you're doing. It's simple as that. Sanitizing and um, just cover, protect yourself. And as moving forward, I don't think any was anyone else can really predict anything. I'm not Nostradamus and I'm not Jesus. <laughs> and all I can do is pray that whatever they say is the correct thing. And we do the best we can do to keep ourselves safe and protect our family and our friends. That's great sage advice. Mm-hmm. Well, as when you look and you see, you know, your your clients, um, what gives you the greatest satisfaction from your creation? Okay, the, I can tell you that's very, very easy. I wish I had a million dollars for every time I could say that. Is when a client put on <laughs> one of my outfits and they start to dance. Once I, it's like having food. The minute you have taste something really good, you're like, mm, that's that's a, that's a sign you've hit it. So for me, when my clients put on the clothes and they start to dance around, that, that's that's what does it for me. And it's very simple because that gives me all the gratification. It was worth me taking the trips to wherever I went to to find the fa- the fabric to design this piece to see it at its final destination in a client's hand. And she is so happy and can't and anticipating to wear this garment to whatever occasion that she knows that she's going to be where she wants to be in her mind and how she wants to feel. It's like simple. It's it's just that gratification of knowing someone is being pleased. That's it's wonderful. So, Roy, how do your name is really says it all? But I want you to tell us exactly how did they find see me. How do they find you and leverage your great talents? Oh, well, See Me Collections is, we have a website. It's www.s-i-m-e-e collections with an S on the end. And then Facebook, we're the same. Sometimes people can find me under my name, which is Rosemary Macklin. Um, I'm in several magazines. I'm in Vogue magazine. I'm in um, Gladys magazine. I'm in Elle magazine. I've been on, you know, so many different um, platforms. You just have to Google me, Google Rosemary Macklin or See Me Collections. And, um, oh, I forgot to say, we're also in Vogue Japan. So we've been all over, and we're we're kind of blessed that – we're very easy to find. Anyone needs to find us. We have the website. We're on Instagram at See Me Collections, Facebook See Me Collections, and my website See Me Collections. You, it's very easy to find us. And most wow, of our no, no. items, which I love to say, is that most of the pieces you see are are sample pieces. So we make them in a. And I, we do sell samples, but basically a lot of times, um, it, so we can make them in different sizes depending on the person and the client. So a lot of times you may see something on the website, you'd be like, oh, that looks too skinny. The models are skinny, but how society is nowadays, Chris, we basically have to um, kind of do the picture for what is they seem more pleasing for the eye. It's basically having certain right. size models, and basically we have these models, and doesn't mean that it cannot fit a plus size model or a petite model. Model. It basically means that's the model we use, but we can make any of the garments in your size. 
this is wonderful. So you aim to please whatever form or factor that that client comes to you with. And I'm and I'm all, I'm no, I'm very accessible, especially if you DM me. And I have this great thing that comes up every Saturday. Um, I do a private online shopping, which basically means ah. any client from anywhere can contact me either on Facebook or Instagram and send me a, no, a message uh, saying that, hey, I'd like to do a shopping. I do it every hour on the hour, starting from 10 a.m. till 6 o'clock in the evening, and it's every, I take a client every hour on the hour. And then um, you just basically tell me what the occasion may be for and your size. I pull from um, from my, my, my store and put everything out that I think would be suitable or fitting to you, and we have a model, model the pieces so you can see it quite clearly, and then you're able to shop. A lot of times, the, for the last three weeks, we've been extremely busy like that, and we've had um, a fantastic one a couple weeks ago with a girlfriend who literally, it was her birthday, and her friends joined her on the Facebook, and we all joined, they all joined in from Facebook, so I had like six different people looking at me, and we had a, a fashion uh-huh. show in the boutique and everything's online you stay wherever you are and you just look online and they were shopping for her so this person was buying the earring that one bought her a bag this one <laughs> bought her two outfits and then that was her birthday gift she got to shop at the see me collections boutique and she didn't have to leave her house so that's the, the revolutionized incredible. way that i've decided to now brand see me collections so as I say, it's every Saturday, but you have to contact us before Saturdays so that you can book your appointment. Or obviously you can call and book it for the following week, so whenever is possible. So we do a lot of different things. Boy, this and as is a matter of fact, before I forget, last thing. Yes, last thing. I'm actually, I'm actually going to partner up with a wonderful young lady from Jamaica who um, does accessories in leather bags and so forth, and we will be pairing mm. her items with the See Me Collection um, travel or resort wear. So basically you are you're kitted out. You don't have to go too far. Only thing you need is the shoes, and I'm, I don't have a shoemaker yet, but <laughs> I do have an accessory <laughs> lady that can put things together. I love your style that you, 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 you're building a value chain that compounds each other's and you network in that way. Rosemary, thank you so much for your energy, for your wisdom, for your strength, for your thank vision. You so you're more yeah, than any welcome. final words as, as we close this evening? Yes, I'd like to just say to any young people that's coming up and thinking of going in the fashion industry, don't be determined by others telling you what they like or they don't like. You have to follow your dream and literally do what pleases you. And that's important because you cannot change for everyone's personality and their mood. You will, the more you enjoy what you're doing, other people will enjoy what they see you do. But the minute you start changing to please one or two individuals, it's no longer your own. And that's what I want to just tell all young, upcoming designers that follow your dream and follow your own ideas. Wow, what sage advice. Thank you so much. And to learn more about Jamaican Diaspora, visit Jamaican Diaspora. And FYI, Simi Collections will be featured in the June edition of the Jamaican Diaspora magazine. As a matter of fact, Rosemary's, well, we are having a full layout about what Cine is doing for the Jamaican community in the diaspora. So look out for that. Jamaican Diaspora, click magazine, and you will see the June issue. To learn more about Chris Daly, visit Digital to Grow. That's digital, the number two, grow.com. And of course, Rosemary Macklin, you can um, visit Simi Collections. Or oh, we do it in a pot was Simi Collections. Rosemary, we really enjoyed spending some time with you. Bye now, and we'll see you. We're going to invite you back. We're going to invite you back for that big surprise that you have coming up that will be in August. So, guys, fans, listen out for Rosemary coming back to spend some time with us and telling us about that big surprise. Rosemary, thank you for spending time with us. See you next time. Bye now. (laughs) 